Okay, we're ready. Okay. Good morning, and welcome to another lecture given by Meridian Soul School of the Highest Learning. First of all, this is a school and not a church, and neither are we associated with any religious organizations, Jehovah Witnesses, or any other denomination you have taught in the world today. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh given to Dr. Henry C. Kenner in the year of 1931. The charts you see pictorially illustrated before you are the results of that divine vision and revelation. I will be explaining the name you see here. Yahweh is the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, which was once laid down in the scriptures. We have Yahweh symbolized as applied on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as applied in many passages of your Bible. We have the cloud extending all around the edge of the chart so that everything on the chart is within the cloud. Just as everything that exists exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. In this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no restricted shape or form in which he is the ultimate source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, they have usually inserted the English title, Lord. Yahweh taking on a super incorporeal shape and form within himself as the word of son is known as Elohim. Now, super incorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state, Yahweh Elohim can only be seen through a divine vision and understood through a divine revelation, as stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Then when Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now, remember, they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now, your translators have come across the true and correct divine titles for Yahweh in shape and form known as Elohim. They have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is known as Yahshua the Messiah, as stated in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as our dawn, be God of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have usually inserted false and erroneous names, such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh taking on a super incorporeal shape and form within himself as the word of the Son is known as Elohim, and Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim manifested in the physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh and his two manifestations, but one spirit, as stated in 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear reckoning in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Now, my investigation on your part will prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the name and title we teach here are true and correct, but that the names and titles that you have taught in the world are false and erroneous. For an example, look up the letter J. It is not and never has been in any part of the Hebrew language. It did not come into existence in any language prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible rendering of our Heavenly Father true and correct name. Yahweh and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Our aims, the primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as it really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, sex, creed, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called laws of nature and powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men who by man must be saved, saved in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now 
in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the New Earth State. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. Say our prayer by Dr. Miranda Gonzalez. Strips of lesson by Dr. Vanessa Collins. Strips of lesson be John, the first chapter. <clears throat> Good morning, class. Let us bow our heart. Let us bow our heart and mind for prayer this morning. <clears throat> Almost gracious Heavenly Father Yahweh, we are thankful that you woke us this morning, clothed with soundness of mind, still with clearness of you, and knowing that all things, all things are of thee. We're thankful that you have allowed us another opportunity to awaken this morning with soundness of mind, with clearness of thought. We thank you that you have showed us even in our darkest moments that you are eternal and you are steadfast and with us. We thank you this morning for moving our hearts to be on the call, to sup with the brethren, to hear, share, and partake of this divine vision and revelation, and for making it be an integral part of us so much so <clears throat> that it is our life. We ask you this morning to remove all preconceived concepts, opinions, and ideas of who and what we think our creator is, how he is, how he exists, and let us listen with all due diligence to those things that are presented and that we weigh them carefully because they are a matter of life and death. <clears throat> so as we gather together, Keep us sober-minded. Keep us still in our thoughts of, of what is about to be presented. And do as was told us to check these things out to see whether they be so or not. These are our blessings. We ask in our son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Scripture lesson for this morning is John, first chapter. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, John, first chapter. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him is life, and the life is the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from Yahweh whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. The true light is that which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own tribe, and his own people received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of Yahweh. That is to them that believe on the name of him who was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, 
but of Yahweh. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness out him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For while the law was given by Moses, grace and truth come by Yahshua the Messiah. No man had seen the Father at any time. The only begotten Son, which was in the bosom of the Father, he shall reveal him to us. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elijah? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? that we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Yahweh, as saith the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not the Messiah, nor Elijah, neither that prophet. John answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were said in Beth Barbara beyond Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day, John seeth Yahshua coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not. But that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bore a record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. And I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And I saw, <clears throat> and bear record that this is the son of Yahweh. Again, the next day after, John stood and two of his disciples. And looking upon Yahshua as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Yahshua. Then Yahshua turned and saw them following and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And in the morning he findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, we have found the Messiah. And he brought him to Yahshua. And when Yahshua beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Kepha. The day following, Yahshua went forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Yahshua of Nazareth, 
the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Yahshua saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no God. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Yahshua answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of Elohim. Thou art the king of Israel. Yahshua answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of Yahweh ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. John, first chapter. Hallelujah. All right, good morning, class. My name is Cliff Carter. I'll be the host slash moderator for this morning slash afternoon lecture. Um, I'll be the first speaker this morning. Um, and I, I really want to ask and pray that y'all be given permission to share the things that he has revealed unto me. And I ask in this moment that he remove me, me out of the way and he uses me um, to speak to me the things that he has prepared this morning. And I pray that he allows us all to see um, clearly um, the things that should be expressed this morning and pray that they are done in clarity, this line of state, Call it. Uh -huh. yes. There's some distortion in your, your delivery. Um, mm -hmm. I'm making sure everybody else okay. hears it. Yeah, I hear it. I hear it too. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad you said that because um, I was having issues with my problem. Let me see if I can do it again. I'm going to just do it from the computer. That's okay. Hold on to it. It's going to let me. It might not let me. Oh, I don't know if it's going to be a few things to work. I may have to turn it from what this is. I'll be first. Oh, okay. I'm going to turn it from what Is it still distorted sounding? Or am I, am I cool? Or how does it sound right now? Sounds better. better. Better, right? That's it. Now. That's it. That's it. Okay. I think I had to move my phone. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Um. So that being said, hopefully, and if I do go out and sound distorted, let me know because I, I may have to switch phones. But there's a lot of reading that we're going to have to do this morning. And um, we're going to have to pay close attention to if there are any questions out the class, please ask them. So I want this to be really, really clear. Um, what prompted part of this anyway was a question I think that was posted on Facebook about a week or so ago, where somebody, not in class or anything like that, but somebody was saying, um, asking the question, well, how is it possible in Genesis, the first chapter, on the first day when, you know, God said, let there be light, and there was light. But then the sun didn't come into the fourth day. How was that possible to have light without the sun and so forth and so on? And we kind of got into it a little bit on Wednesday. Um, but some things that Yahweh had opened up to me and it was just so beautiful. And it kind of goes along with the whole purpose of Yahweh. So hopefully Yahweh will um, allow us to get it out this morning. Okay. So with the first chapter of Jonah, I had that read for a reason. The very first verse, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. Now, if we go to Genesis, the first chapter, let's um, go to Genesis, first chapter real quick. Let's see how we're going to do this. 
first 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 in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. And Elohim saw the light that it was good. And Elohim divided between the light and between the darkness. And Elohim called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Called. And there's a lot that can be broken down about this first um of the chapter of Genesis 1 through 5. Now, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth is what she just read. But then we just read in John, the first chapter, in the beginning was the word. And it sounds like you have two different in the beginning. Now, when you go over to John, the first chapter, this is what Yahweh had showed unto John. John saw, or Yahweh showed John the creation. But he also showed John what happened before he created any heaven or any earth. But in the beginning that John saw was in the beginning of Yahweh's way, in the beginning of Yahweh creating anything. And so in the beginning was the word of Yahweh. The word was with Yahweh and that same word that was Yahweh. We're going to talk about a few things um, this morning. And then so in Genesis, the first chapter, you have the in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Now, Genesis, the first chapter is actually Moses' vision that he received on top of Mount Sinai in the 24th chapter of Exodus that we um, talked about before. And we'll probably get that through just briefly. But in the beginning of Moses' vision that he saw, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So darkness was there already. You didn't hear anything where Moses expressed that Yahweh said, let there be darkness. Darkness was already there. He did say, let there be light. And there was light. And he saw the light, that it was good. And he divided between the light and the darkness. The light he called day. The darkness he called night. And it says the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, how could you have an evening and a morning without a sun? And so that's the confusion that's been caused. Not knowing or understanding that in Genesis, the first chapter, the sun was already in the earth. The sun was already rising and setting. There was already, these things were already created when Moses was seeing this vision in the mount. And so when you have the evening and the morning being the first day, that's talking about, or that means that the evening and the morning of that one, that first day that Moses was up in the mount, Yahweh showed this to him in that first day while the sun was already rising and setting, which we'll hopefully I will get that. Now, I want to establish a couple other things real quick and we'll stay on this line for just a second and we're going to pick up Yahshua and John as well. So can we go to... Um, Psalm 7416 first. Oh, you got to do it. And then if somebody else can get Ecclesiastes 12, 1 and 2. And then somebody else get Isaiah 45 and 7. Psalm first. Psalm 7416. The day is dying. The night also is done. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. Oh, the day is done. The night also is done. Thou, Yahweh, hast prepared the light and the sun. So there's a difference between the light and the sun. 
mm-hmm. S U N. Yahweh has prepared the light and he also prepared the sun. And we're going to show you in a minute. And it didn't take six days to even do any of this. But just want to show the difference. There is a difference between the light that Yahweh prepared and there's a difference between the sun. You can have light without the sun. Now, go to Ecclesiastes 12, 1 and 2. Ecclesiastes 12, 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. Pause. So while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. So I'm showing that there is a difference between the sun and the light that was on the first and fourth day. On the first day, he said, let there be light. And there was light. And on the fourth day, he made two great lights. One was greater than the other. The sun was to rule by day. The moon was to rule by night. He also made the stars. So just showing the difference that there was a difference between the light that he formed on the first day. And there's a difference between the sun that he put in the um, sky on the fourth day. Just, just using those two as a um, reference. Go to Isaiah 45 and 7. Isaiah 45 and 7. <clears throat> I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create punishments. I, Yahweh, do all these things. Can you read that again out of the King James Version for me? It's on the screen if you need to read it off the screen. Okay. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. <clears throat> now, Yahweh said in, um, through Isaiah, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. So when Yahweh formed the light, it's not like he had some type of substance that he came and he used and he just started forming it with his hands. No, that was Yahweh. That was Yahweh's spirit that took on shape and form. We just read that in John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the word. The word was with Yahweh and the word was Yahweh. This is Yahweh in shape and in form. This is the light that Yahweh formed. In the beginning before he created anything. Proverbs 8. I think I want Proverbs 8, chapter 22. Hold on, let me get my thoughts together first. Though. Proverbs 43. Don't, don't read anything yet. Let me get my thoughts together. Just hold that one. Proverbs 8, 22. And then also Isaiah 43 and 10. Um, Mm-mm-mm. Um. What matter of fact, started uh, seven with Isaiah. Um. Do Isaiah forty three and seven first, and then we'll go to Proverbs. I would put it together, please. Isaiah 43 and 7, mm-hmm. even everyone that is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Now, y'all are saying everyone that's called by my name, 
I've created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I, Yahweh, have made him. We're still talking about the light. Just stick with me now. Tenth verse. Eighth verse. Tenth verse. Ye are my witnesses, saith Yahweh, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was nothing formed of El, neither shall there be after me. Now before me, there was nothing formed of El, neither shall there be after me. I form the light and I create darkness. I make, um, what is it? Peace. I make peace and I create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. We're still talking about the light. Now we're going to bring it down and have the first day and the second day, third day, fourth day. That's part of it. But those are principles to point up to the true light. And there was a reason why he waited to the fourth day to put the sun in. But I just want to establish what the true light is first. And show that there is a difference between the light and between the sun, S-U-N. There is a difference between those things. I formed the light. And then he also said that he formed, although he called by his name, he formed him and made him. And he created him for his glory, to glorify him. That was That's the whole purpose of Yahweh. But for Yahweh... To glorify himself in the things that he made by reconciling all things back unto himself through Yahshua, the Messiah. That is the purpose of Yahweh. And I'm going to prove that this day by using light. Now, if we can go to Okay, well, that's that form of light. He also, over there in Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah, I knew, the, knew thee before I formed thee in thy mother's belly. And he knew you too before you were formed in your mother's belly. Why so? Because it was his spirit that formed you. You are Yahweh, manifested in a physical body. Not you, not your personality. Your personality is something else. Not your personality, but the spirit that is in you is Yahweh. Prove it, girl. You got to prove it, Carla, by the law and the prophets. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to come back to this line. This is all going to be on the same line now. Where is it at, Yahweh? Show me where it's at. Is it, uh, is it Kings or is it in Samuel? Uh, da, 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 da. Where was it where, I think it's 1 Samuel, go to 1 Samuel 28. Where is it? Start at the first verse, I'm going to find it. 1 Samuel 28. 1 Samuel 28 and 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. And Akish said unto David, Know thou assuredly that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and thy men? And David said to Akish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Akish said to David, Therefore will I make thee keeper of mine head forever. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Pause. Now remember now, keep this in mind. He said, all those that are called by my name, I, Yahweh, created him for my glory, and I formed him, yea, I made him. Those that are called by his name, Yahweh formed them himself. I formed the light and I created darkness. Read. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together 
and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. Mm -hmm. And when Saul inquired of Yahweh, Yahweh answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Now, Saul had already made Yahweh angry with him, and Yahweh, he disobeyed Yahweh, and Yahweh rent the kingdom out of his hand. So all this is the aftermath of that. And so Saul inquired of Yahweh, like before, but Yahweh didn't answer him by dream, by Urim, or by any prophet. And so Saul sent his servants out to seek a, um, seek a woman who has familiar spirits. Now, before this, he had set a decree where um, they, shouldn't, they couldn't do any of those things. Otherwise, they would be put to death. And so he's going to send for a woman that has a familiar spirit to try to um, see if he can get some answers. So read the eighth verse. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, and he went and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he mm -hmm. said, I pray thee, inquire for me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then thou layest a snare for my life to cause me to die. Because she didn't realize that that was Saul. Now Saul was the king at the time and he sent out, he cut off all those that had familiar spirits and the wizards and all of those. And so she was afraid to do it because she knew that if she did it, if Saul found out about it, she would be killed. But Saul disguised himself so she wouldn't know who he was. And Saul said, I'm concerned to temper for him. And Saul swore to her by Yahweh, saying, As Yahweh liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Now, he's asking for her to bring up the spirit of Samuel so he can ask Samuel what to do or ask Samuel to inquire of Yahweh. Now, he's looking for the spirit of Samuel. I formed them. Yea, I, Yahweh, have made them. I formed the light. I create darkness. Read. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw as it were Elohim ascending out of the earth. Paul, Paul, Paul. Watch this now. Now when she called for Samuel's spirit, what she said that she saw, I saw as it were Elohim ascending out of the earth. And look at what Saul asked her next. What was the question that he just asked her after she said that? Read it. And he said unto her, what form is he of? What and form she, mm. is he of? What form did Elohim take on when he ascended from the earth? What form did you see he take on? Read it. And she said, an old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. Now, and he didn't recognize Samuel, that the body that Samuel had before Yahweh took that body off of Samuel. He perceived that it must have been Samuel, though. But she saw as if it were the were Elohim ascending out of the earth. And he said, what form is he of? And when she said it was an old man covered with a mantle, he perceived that it was Samuel. And so he asked Samuel whatever. And then Samuel was like, what? if y'all had cut you off, what you going to ask me for? And so my whole point is that all of the children of Yahweh, Yahweh formed them 
when they were in their mother's womb. I, Yahweh, I formed the light and create darkness. But, but, but at the time, before Joshua came in and died on the cross, poured out and was buried and resurrected the third day, according to the scriptures, and poured out the Holy Spirit, there was no understanding. The light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not at that time. But after, we'll talk about it in a minute, then there was no more need for the light of the sun. Yeah, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, so just want to, let's go back. We're talking about the light, right? I form the light, I create darkness. We're talking about what that was on the first day that had the light before the sun came in. What was that like? Now, go to Proverbs 8.22. In the beginning was the word. The word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. So eight twenty-two. Goodness, Yahweh, this is a lot. Proverbs eight twenty-two. Mm -hmm. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of His way, before mm -hmm. His works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning. Wherever the earth was. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, wherever the earth was. Before the earth was brought forth, I was set up from everlasting. Read. I was set up when there was no depths. I was brought forth when there were no fountains abounding with water before the mountains were settled before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth nor the fields nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there when he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the cloud above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him. And I was then I as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Now, who is this that's speaking then? Because now, whoever this is speaking was there with Yahweh in the beginning before he created the heavens and the earth. Whoever this is speaking is the, in the beginning that John saw. In the beginning was the word. This is the word of Yahweh speaking. Well, who is the word of Yahweh? Go up to the 14th verse. In Proverbs. Yes, 14th verse. Counsel is mind and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I am understanding. That is understanding speaking. Go up a little bit before that. To the 12th verse. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Now, wisdom is speaking. Mm -hmm. Now, two, two verses down, is I am understand. So, is wisdom and understanding the same thing? Go up a little bit before that so we can see who's speaking. Mm -hmm. Go to the first verse. Does not wisdom cry? And understanding put forth her voice. So it is wisdom and understanding that is speaking. That's who was in the beginning with Yahweh before ever the earth was. That's what took on shape and form as Elohim. That is the word of Yahweh, is his wisdom, his understanding, his knowledge, these attributes that we see on this chart. That make up this cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He just chose a cloud to 
uh, describe himself because the cloud has no particular shape or form, and Yahweh in his pure spirit state has no particular shape or form. It is this, these attributes is what took on shape and form as the word or son, which is Elohim. This is Yahweh in shape and form, known as Elohim. The title Elohim means to be. To be what? Whatever I will to be. Now, so before anything was made, Yahweh took on shape and form and it said, now by him was all things made and without him was not anything made that was made. Now go to Colossians 1.16. Before you do that, go to Ephesians 3 and 9 and then Colossians 1.16. You want to establish what the word is, what the light is, who, like what it really is now. So Ephesians 3 and 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages hath been hid in Yahweh, who created all things by Yahshua the Messiah. Now, wait a minute. I thought all things were created by the word. That's what John the first chapter talks about. Want to show you who the light is, what the light is, and what is it, not just the physical body that we keep thinking that Yahshua is, but what it truly is. Colossians 116, we'll go back to um, John. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Go up above so we know who the by him is. Wait, wait, wait. Um, 13th verse. Well, 12th verse. Giving thanks 12th. unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Even now it's in the sun. I'm sorry, so sorry. Now it's in the sun that we have redemption through the blood. So we're talking about the sun right now. Now the sun and the sun we have redemption through the sun's blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Colon, read. Who is the image of the invisible L, the first cause of all creation? Cause. Now the sun. Is the it now? This is the image of the invisible L, who is the first cause. This is the first cause of all creation. This is where all things were created from. When Yahweh took on shape and form, this was Yahweh in shape and form as the Word or Son. I was brought up with Him as one, um, brought up by Him as one, uh, brought up with Him. If I say that right. Read, keep reading where you are. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. All things were created by the Son. All things are created by him and for him. We just read that a minute ago in Ephesians. Everything was created. Yahweh, Yahweh created all things by Yahshua the Messiah. Now, we know that before everything was created, the sun, the moon, the stars, the heavens, the earth, man, cattle, all those things were created before he manifested um, in the flesh as Yahshua the Messiah. So when did he create these things then? So that lets you know that he didn't become the Messiah when he took on this, this uh, body back here. That's who he was already. How do we know that? <laughs> That's who they were looking for. They were looking for him all their lifetime. They just didn't know what form he was coming in. And so Yahweh was the one that had to point out the light of the world to them. Because the light shined in darkness, but the darkness did not comprehend it. Let's stay on that line. 
Matter of fact, get Daniel 325 for me real quick. We're going to come right back. I'm going to go to the law and the prophet. Daniel 3 and 5. 325, I'm sorry. Daniel 325. Daniel 325. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of the Elohim. Now, pause. Hold on a minute now, Nebuchadnezzar. What are you talking about? How do you even know what the form of the son of Elohim looked like? He hadn't even manifested in the flesh yet. <laughs> Y'all ever think about that one? He was not that physical body. That's why they didn't know who he was because they didn't even know what form he was coming in to save the world. He, they had no eyes. They were looking for him. And the only way that they would know who he is is Yahweh had to be the, point, be the one to point him out for them to know who he was. And then he turned around and revealed the father to them. That's what we just read a minute ago, how the son had to reveal the father to them or to us. I form the light, I create darkness. Now, let's go back to the darkness part real quick, and we're going to bring it on around with the law and the prophets and Abraham and bring it down and Joshua and John and fulfill it and all that good stuff, and we're going to be out the way. Now, I form the light, I create darkness, right? I form the light, and I create darkness. What is the darkness that he created? Now, you got the prince of the power of the air, the prince of darkness, you got all those. And we know that that's referring to Satan. What do you mean? God didn't create the devil. We just read over in Isaiah that I create evil. Mm -hmm. Go to Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. I form the light and I create evil. Ezekiel 28 and 12. Son 11. of man, 11. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith Yah Yahweh, thou sealest up the, up the psalm, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now, who is he speaking to? He's speaking to the king, the king. of Tyrus. The king of Tyrus now, a man, a physical man, right. a king of Tyrus, mm -hmm. son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, thus saith Yahweh, thou fillest up the psalms full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Read. 13th verse. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of Elohim. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. All right. This is way, 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 way after and Michael was there to guard the way. Couldn't nobody go back in the Garden of Eden. So how was the king of Tyrus ever in the Garden of Eden? That's right. Three. Thou has been in Eden. Eden. Thou has been in Eden, the Garden of Elohim. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sawdust, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. In the day that thou wast created. Now, we don't read anywhere in those six or seven days that Mo Yahweh showed Moses the creation being created where darkness was created. We don't read that. Mm -hmm. So when was this, when was he created then? He was created before the heavens and the earth was created. Matter of fact, he was cast down to the unfinished creation when Michael kicked him out of heaven. That's another thing. Satan is no match for Yahweh. He was created to oppose Yahweh. And he definitely is a worthy opponent because Yahweh is the one created him. But he is no match for Yahweh. 
The adversary is our enemy or, or our opponent. Right. And that's why he said, greater is he that is in you than he that in the world. And anyway, I don't want to get off and say that's a whole nother side thing. Now, in the day that thou was created, read. We're talking to the king of Tyrus now, 14th verse. Thou art the anointed cherubim that covereth, and I set thee so. Wait a minute. The, the anointed cherub that covered, that was Satan that overshadowed Michael and Gabriel. Mm -hmm. So he's talking to Satan in the king of Tyrus. That's right. who was in the Garden of Eden. In the day that he was created, thou art that anointed cherub that covered, and I, Yahweh, set thee so. Read. Thou was upon the holy mountain of Elohim. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. In the day that thou was created, he created evil. He created the darkness, but he formed the light. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word, the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. The 14th verse, the same word was made flesh. And said, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. That was the true light, but John was sent to bear witness of that light. Now, if we look at the ages and dispensations chart, Now, after the expulsion of Satan out of heaven, after Michael kicked Satan out of heaven, and Michael fought against the dragon, his angels, and they prevailed not, Michael kicked Satan out of heaven. This is the unfinished creation. And then Yahweh created the creation in the day, all on time. In the day, Yahweh created the physical heavens and the earth and the man and all those things like that. And Satan was in the garden. With the man and the with the man that Yahweh created or formed, excuse me, that Yahweh formed from the dust of the ground. He formed the man Adam from the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Satan was already there, but Satan had nothing to oppose. He was created to oppose, but at the time he had nothing to oppose until Yahweh told Adam. Of all the trees of the garden, thou mayest freely eat the one in the midst of the garden. Don't touch that one, Adam. In the day, not if, but in the day that you do it, you shall surely die or you shall, you shall die the death. Why didn't he say in the day that you do it? Because Yahweh set it up for him to do it because Yahweh has to bring it down for his purpose because the whole purpose was for Yahweh to glorify himself by reconciling all things back unto himself through Yahshua the Messiah. So Yahweh has to be the degenerator. He has to bring it down in Adam. And so Yahweh gave the commandment and Satan had something to oppose. He could not come to Adam to try to deceive Adam. Satan had to wait for the woman to be taken out of the man and get her alone and by herself to deceive her by using the things that she saw of the sight of her eyes. She was drawn out by the sight of her eyes and the things that she desired. A tree to be desired to make one wise. And she had physical, natural appetites, and so did Adam. They, physically, they had physical, natural appetites of food and wanting to eat food and things like that. So they had physical, natural, carnal appetites. But, the carnal mind as far as the condemned, depraved mind came after the transgression, after the woman was deceived and partook of the tree that Yahweh told them not to take of, and she fell in her conscience. She took it to her husband, and because of his instinctive love for his offspring or for his wife, he likewise took part in the same transgression as Eve in order to save her. 
And so Adam did partake of it, and he died for his bride, willingly died for his bride. The only way he could die was to transgress. Sounds a little funny, but he had to likewise take part in the same transgression or take on the likeness of sinful flesh with his, to die for his bride in order for her to live, because in childbearing shall she be saved. Now. After the transgression, darkness reigned or death reigned from all on all mankind. That darkness was deep. It was heavy, so thick that it could be felt. And so darkness or death reigned from Adam all the way down, all the way to the Messiah. So that darkness or that ignorance or that death that Fell upon Adam, fell upon all mankind after that. Anybody born after that, they were born in darkness. That's what David talked about. I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Now, so after that transgression, everybody came in after that was born in darkness or without the knowledge of Yahweh. Because before that, Adam walked and talked with Yahweh daily. He was one with Yahweh. That was Yahweh Elohim in Adam. Naming the animals. It was Yahweh Elohim in Adam that said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. For this call shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. That was Yahweh Elohim and Adam that said that. And it was Yahweh Elohim that carried out his purpose to perfection. And so when Adam came down and Yahweh drove, well, Michael drove them out of the guard and guarded the way. After that point forward, they had to offer up sacrifices because in or the wages of sin is death and the only remission of that is blood. And so because of that death state that they were in, they had to offer up sacrifices. Something innocent had to die in order for the, the person that transgressed to live. That condemnation was on all of them. So Adam, they had to offer up sacrifices. That's what the big argument was about, Cain and Abel. Now, Adam was a king over the earth. Yahweh gave him rule and dominion over all the things that were created. He was the king. Now, his heir was going to take the place of the king. They were, whoever his heir, whether it was Cain or Abel, were going to take the place of Adam and reign and rule over everything as well. That was the big fight. That's what they were arguing about. Now, I don't have a whole bunch of time to read it, but you can go to Revelation, um, the 12th chapter, start the first verse and pick it up. But y'all have to show you that too. But hope if you have a question about it or you want me to prove it to you later on, I can go and read it for you after class. We've got a whole bunch of moving to do. Now, Cain and Abel were supposed to offer up sacrifices. Cain offered up the first fruits of the ground because he was the killer of the ground. Abel was the keeper of the sheep or a herdsman or a shepherd. And he offered up the first one of his flock. Yahweh hadn't told them, they didn't have a law to do that, but that was in him to do that. And Yahweh accepted Abel's sacrifice and did not accept Cain's sacrifice. And Cain was upset about it and wroth about it. And Yahweh came to him and gave him, a, it looked like he gave him a chance and said, look, if you do well, then you'll have rule and dominion over your brother. But if not, sin lies for you at the door. And so Cain was so upset about it, he killed his brother Abel. So let, let me keep going. So all the way down, they were offering up sacrifices continually. Why so? Because the transgressions of the father were passed down to the children until the third and fourth generation. Keep that in mind, third and fourth generation. So the, the iniquity of the fathers is passed upon the children until the third and fourth generation, so says the scripture. And so the so the transgression of Adam passed upon all of the children to the third and fourth generation. Now, Yahweh was still operating his purpose. It was the Holy Spirit speaking through those prophets. It was the Holy Spirit that came to Noah and gave Noah the vision that Noah was going to um, had to preach that it was gonna the world was gonna be destroyed by flood. How did he know that? Yahweh showed it to him. 
and he found favor in Yahweh's sight. You had the sons of Elohim and you had the daughters of men back there. Remember, I formed the light. I create darkness. We talk about the vessels of honor and the vessels of dishonor. Now, the light shined in darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. Even though the Holy Spirit was speaking through those prophets back then, the prophets inquired themselves about what it was that was coming out of their mouth. The light shined in darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. They did not understand what it was that they were talking about. We're talking about the light and we're talking about the darkness. What is it talking about? And why did he wait to the fourth day to bring the sun in? How is it possible? That's what we're talking about now. Now, in these ages and dispensations, on this dispensation chart, now in the second age, you have the antediluvian. First age, you have the creative age, where you, it starts with the creation of the angelic host. And then um, it ends with Adam in the garden. Well, um, and then the second age starts after Adam um, transgressed or whatever, things like that. So you have Adam in the garden, and you have the transgression that starts the second age. Second age is called the antediluvian age, and it's also called the age of conscience. Because now the man has, he partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now he has knowledge of good and evil. And so there is no more excuse now as far as not knowing what's right and what's wrong. So before y'all even gave a law, period, every man had it in them to know the difference between right and wrong. Y'all gave every man a sufficient amount of intelligence to know the difference between right and wrong. The Gentiles, by nature, did the things that were in the law. How do we prove that? Even though Yahweh spoke from the mount and said, thou shalt not commit adultery. And he spoke that to, the law was given to Israel and Israel only at that time. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That was in 1490 BBY. Now, way before then, 430 something years before then, I think about 500 years, 500 years before then, Abraham and Sarah, his wife, went into the land of the Philistines, into the land of Gerar, and Abimelech, king of the Philistines, saw Abram's wife, Sarah, and saw how beautiful she was, and he took her to be his wife because Abram feared that if they saw her, they would kill him for her, and so he told her, wherever we go, say that I'm your brother and you're my sister, and so she, that's what they told Abimelech, and so he took Sarah, his, his, Abraham's wife, to be his wife. And Yahweh warned Abimelech in a dream, saying that, that if you, you are a dead man because of this woman. And he rose up early that morning. He told Abraham, he said, what have you done? You almost made me sin against Yahweh. And Abimelech was a Gentile. So how did he know that it was a sin to sleep with this man's wife? Because the light that was in him he already knew the difference between right and wrong because this is the age of content. Every man knows the difference between right and wrong now. Cain knew that it was wrong to kill his brother Abel. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been saying, am I my brother's keeper? He wouldn't have buried his brother. Joseph knew that it was wrong to sleep with Portiphar's wife. How did he know that? The law hadn't been given yet. And so my whole point is the age of content. Now, now they know the difference between right and wrong now. But they just didn't have anything in them to keep the law that Yahweh was going to give them um, down the line. That's why the sun had to come in in order to shine in their hearts so that they could be able to comprehend the darkness. Now, so this darkness reigns from Adam all the way down. So that's my whole point. And so then you had um, the first and second dispensation in the second age. And then you had the third and fourth dispensation in the third age. And after that, after the third age, or after the fourth dispensation, is when Joshua came in and died on the cross, was buried and rose again the third day to pour out the Holy Spirit. So you have these four ages and dispensations that had to pass before the sun came in to give the light or to rule the day. So in the first chapter of Genesis, it talks about let there be light, but then he waited to the fourth day 
to put the sun in to rule the day, and the moon was to rule the night. Now, what is that? Oh, there's so many different things in there. Oh, and still in the line with the light. Okay, so we got that. Um, now, go back to John, the first chapter. I believe that's what I want. And then let's see where y'all are taking. Let's go to John first chapter. John, the first John one, one and one. John one and one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, all in things him, were made by the word. I'm so sorry. All things were made by the word, and without the word was not anything made that was made. And who, what was the word? That was Yahweh himself. In him, or in the word, was life. And the life was the light of men. Read. Fifth verse. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from Yahweh whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Mm -hmm. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Mm -hmm. The true light was that which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now, the true light, now John was not the light. The true light was the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Read. The same, I'm, tar- I'm sorry, ninth verse, ninth, I'm sorry. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Now, he was he in can- the world. The world was made by him, and the world didn't know who he was. They had no clue. Even though they were looking for him, they had no clue of who he was. Why is that? Matthew 11, 27. And then we're going to go to Luke first chapter. Matthew 11, 27. Okay. Matthew 11, 27. And turning to his disciples, he said, all things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Mm-hmm. Now, all things that this is the Messiah speaking, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, knoweth any man and knoweth any man the Father except the Son, and he to whomever the Son will reveal the Father to. Now, nobody knew who the Messiah was. I said the Messiah now. Now they knew of who Yahshua was, the son of Joseph. They thought that he was Yahshua, the son of Joseph. They had no idea that he was the Messiah. They did not call him Yahshua the Messiah until after Pentecost. Before then, they called him Yahshua of Nazareth. And so they knew who the physical man Yahshua was, but they had no clue that that was the Messiah. And there was a purpose for that because Yahweh had these things hidden for a time until until the sun was made manifest. And so that's why when he said, let there be light, and there was light, and there was light for all three of those days, and then he put the sun in the sky to rule the day. He called the light day, the darkness he called night. Now, the sun, the S-U-N, was representing the sun, S-O-N. He was supposed to rule the day. If you look in the scripture, it talks about the children of the day. So the Messiah in your heart, that's what rules the children of the day, or that's what governs your heart or your mind is the Messiah. That's the, that's the true light. And then you have the children of the night. Now, the law is represented by the moon. Now, the law was given to Israel during that time of darkness 
because it was supposed to rule the night, the darkness he called night, because there was no understanding and no Holy Spirit poured out at the time. And so they didn't have anything in them to keep them doing right. So Yahweh gave them that law that they were supposed to take, and they were supposed to take that and be a light to the rest of the world. But they failed miserably at it because that was not the true light. The, the, the law was a shadow of the things to come. That's what it's a whole bunch of that, that I don't even have, have a whole bunch of time. Good. Now, I'll, nobody knew who the son was but the father. Now, let's go to Luke, the first chapter. Um, where is it? I'll read, start at 59 first. Luke 159. Luke 159, and it came to pass that on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zechariah after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, there is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote saying his name is John. And they all marveled. And his mouth was open immediately and his tongue loosed. And he spake and praised Yahweh. Pause. Oh, now, um, I probably should have got that uh, above that. Let's go a little bit above that because I don't want to skip anything. So I need that to go to the, um, the first chapter. And... First verse. First verse. No, no, uh uh. Um, that's too much. Fifth verse. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And so they, they both, were of the tribe of Levi. So, I'm sorry. So they were of the tribe of Levi. They were Levites. So this is Zechariah and Elizabeth, John the what the world who the world calls John the Baptist's parents. But his name was not John. His name was um, John or Eliah. So these were his parents. They were of the tribe of Levi. So John the Baptist was a Levite of the priesthood um, tribe. Sixth verse. And they were both righteous before Yahweh, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of Yahweh blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before Yahweh in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of Yahweh. And so the, the whole same thing that Nate, I'm sorry. So the same job that Nadab and Abihu had, which was Aaron's son, that's the same job that Zechariah had, that he was supposed to burn incense in the tabernacle, um, in the holy place. So that was his job. Zachary. So that, that was Zechariah's job. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I said the wrong name. Zachary, that was Zechariah's job. Same job that Nadab and Abihu had, they were killed for if they offered up trans instance. This was his job. So he was definitely of the tribe of Levi, which was um, after the um, order of Aaron. Keep reading. 10th verse. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of Yahweh standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Now, and thou shalt evidently, it, now, so even though they were well stricken in age, and Elizabeth was barren, he was still, they were still praying to Yahweh for a son. It has nothing to do with your age. And I'm going to leave that right there. Keep reading. 14th verse. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, 
and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of Yahweh and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Now, John the Baptist shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Read. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to Yahweh, their Elohim. Mm -hmm. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for Yahweh. Pause, wait a minute. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of who? Elijah. Elijah. He shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. This is why we have to read. Now, if we knew who Elijah the prophet was, then we would know that at, right before Yahweh took him, after his mission was done, at Jordan River, Elisha was there at Jordan River, and Yahweh took Elijah up at Jordan River, and his, and his mantle, Elijah's mantle, fell upon Elisha, and Elisha received a double portion of the spirit at Jordan River. Now, John the Baptist shall go before Yahweh in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and, to, and the disobedience to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for Yahweh. Sounds very familiar to me. Read. 18th verse. And Zechariah said unto the angel, whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of Yahweh and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these, these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Pause. Okay. Now go back to where we were in the 59, I think. 59. Where were we? And so we already got the seventh, the fact that after the eighth day when um, child was circumcised, they called his name Zechariah after his father, but his mother said, nope, he shall be called John. And they were like, ain't nobody in your family called John. And so then they asked Zechariah, what you think about it? So he wrote on the uh, table that his name will be John, just for the sake of understanding. It wasn't John, there was no J back then, but just for the sake of understanding, we'll say John, because that's what we're reading. And they all marveled at it. And then immediately his mouth was opened and loose, just like Gabriel told him it would be, because now these things have been fulfilled. And then fear came upon all of them that dwelt around them. And all of them that heard, um, all, the, all they that heard them laid, their, laid them up in their hearts, saying, what manner of child shall this be? And the hand of Yahweh is with him. And so there was a reason why when the Pharisees came to him in uh, the first chapter of John, which we're going to talk about in, the reason, in, in a minute, why they were asking him, you know, are you the Messiah? The reason why is because he was born with the Holy Spirit and they were, you know, all this happened. Like, what manner of child shall this be? The hand of Yahweh is definitely with him. Read the 67th verse and come down, and then we'll go back to John, the first chapter. Okay, Luke 167. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Now, and keep in hath, mind these words. I'm so sorry. Keep in mind these words. He has visited. Mm -hmm. And redeemed his people. He visited and redeemed his people. Remember what we read a minute ago. The spirit and power of Elijah. Okay, read. 69th verse. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. 
as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been in past ages, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, mm -hmm. the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him with fear, with fear without in fear. holiness. Without, I'm, did I'm say, sorry. With fear or without fear? No without that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear Paul, in holiness because, and, the, and pause, 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 I'm sorry. because before the uh death the resurrection of Yahshua Messiah and the, the law and things like that y'all had given unto them they feared him because of the, the all the things that he would do but then once Yahweh comes into your heart and you realize who he is and who you are, you can serve him without fear. Now you serve mm. him with love, but fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. Read. Uh, something else. 75th, mm -hmm. 75th verse. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Mm -hmm. And thou and thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of Yahweh to prepare his ways. Mm -hmm. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our Elohim. Whereby the day spring from on high visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Mm -hmm. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. So this child was given to them to prepare the way of Yahweh to bring the people to the light, to bring them to the light, not that he was the light, but to bring them to the light, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. And so then we go back over to John, and we're going to go to John the first chapter again, and then go to Luke three and two, and then we're going to go to the law of prophets for Moses and then. So John one and... Uh, he was not the light sent there, witness of the light. Um, we stopped at 10. Okay, that's fine. Keep going. Where you are. Okay, John 1 and we're going to go back to 9. Yeah. The true light was that which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was I'm in sorry, the world. To, I'm, I'm sorry. Go back to seven. I'm sorry. Okay. The same six. There was a man sent from Yahweh whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Mm -hmm. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. The true light was that which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Mm -hmm. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Now, he the, came same came for, I'm sorry, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. So John had to come and bear witness of the light. No man knows the son, but the father now. But John had to come to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. Now skip on down to nineteenth verse. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? 
-hmm. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. Now, he, they were wondering who he was because at this time, John was baptizing all of those Jews in Jordan River. And they were like, well, who, who are you? The 70 elders sent out some priests to go ask him who he was. And he confessed and denied not, but he's confessing, I'm not the Messiah. And they asked him, well, who are you then? Are you Elijah? He said, no. Are you that prophet? He said, no. And they said, well, who are you? What do you say thou of yourself? And what did John say in the 23rd, chapter, 23rd verse of John? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of Yahweh, as said the prophet Isaiah. Now, pause before we go any farther than this. Go to Matthew 3.13. We're going to come back to finish here. And then we'll go to Luke, the third chapter, second verse. Matthew 3.13. Matthew 3.13. Then cometh Joshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of Paul, thee. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Paul, because I don't want to take for granted that you know exactly what, um, where we are. So if you know um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those four different individuals gave their account of the birth death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. And so they gave their account of it. So this is Matthew's account of John, right? So let's go to Matthew, the first third chapter, first verse. First chapter, third verse. Third chapter, first verse. Oh, third chapter, verse. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is near at hand. Mm -hmm. for, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Yahweh, make straight in the desert a highway for our Elohim. Mm -hmm. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a linen girdle about his loins and his food was locust and wild honey. Mm -hmm. the, then came out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized by him in Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized in water and they had to come to him and confess their sins to him. And then he had to baptize them. Because the wages of sin is death. So when they came to him to confess their sins, they were confessing that they were dead. And so what do you do with a dead man? You bury him. So after they confessed that they were dead, he actually buried them in the water in type because they had to be buried in the death of Yahshua the Messiah so that in hope that they could raise with him when Yahweh raised them from the dead. That was the whole principle why Yahweh had John doing that. And he also had John, John doing that to find, so he can point out to John who the Messiah was. So John could turn around and point out the Messiah to the rest of Israel so that Messiah can show them who Yahweh was. That was the whole point of it. And, we're, and so all the Jerusalem, Judea, and the uh, reason about Jordan, they came to him be baptized, confessing their sins. Seven verse. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to the baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say unto you, that Yahweh is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. What stones? Wait a minute. What mm -hmm. stones? John could not baptize anywhere he wanted to in the River Jordan. Now, if mm -hmm. you remember, when Israel had to cross over Jordan, they had to take those 12 stones and lay mm -hmm. them in the Jordan River to mark where they crossed over Jordan. 
Those were those same 12 stones that John was talking about when he was baptizing them in Jordan because it all has to be fulfilled. John had to fulfill what happened back there with uh, Moses and the children of Israel when Joshua was the one that crossed over and took the children of Israel on over into Canaan land. And at Jordan River, when Joshua crossed over to get to take them over into Canaan land, that's when Moses had to reveal to Israel who Joshua the son of Nun was at Jordan River at the exact same place that John is baptizing them where he has to reveal where y'all is going to show him who Joshua is. It has mm-hmm. to be that way. He had to mm-hmm. be in the exact same spot that it was back there in the law and in the prophets. And Joshua's going to tell him why it had to be that way in just a second. Keep reading. 10th verse. And now also the ax is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree with which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Paul, but he that he's specific, he's specifically saying he's baptizing with water. The word right. baptize does not mean water. Baptize right. means to bury, to inundate, to cover to emerge. So he is baptizing them in physical waters unto repentance. But, read it. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, mm-hmm. whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat unto the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Joshua unto Galilee to George unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him saying, I have need to be baptized of thee and cometh thou to me. Why did John say that? Because when everybody, every time somebody came to John to be baptized, they had to confess their sins first. When Yahshua came to John and John asked him what sins did he have, Yahshua said, I have no sins. And then John said, well, you coming to me. I need to be baptized of you. And you coming to me? What did Yahshua tell John? 15th verse. And Yahshua answered and said unto him, permit it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. So Yahshua told John, it becometh me. No, he said it becometh us. Us, us, Me and you, John. We both are fulfilling all righteousness. Then he suffered him to be baptized. So what was John fulfilling then? John had had a part to play in it too. He was was born with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so read the next two verses, please, so we can get back over where we were. Yahshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and in and he saw the spirit of Yahweh descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Who was the he and, that saw that? That was John. John is the he that saw it. Right. And Yahshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the spirit, John saw the spirit of Elohim descending like a dove and lighting, lighting upon him. Read. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now go back over there to John where we were just a second ago and we'll put all this together. So when they came to uh, John and they asked him, uh, you know, they came to him asking him, who art thou and all those things like that. That's when he said, oh, generation of vipers. You coming to me, bring forth fruits of repentance and all those things like that and so forth and so on. So all that happened in between this. And so then what John is talking about here, he's saying, I am the voice of one crime in the wilderness, prepare you the way of Yahweh. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. Those were the generation of vipers that John talked to in Matthew, the third chapter, all this happened 
at the same, this is all happening in this one event. This is the same event that Matthew talked about that we're reading here in John, but we're going to fill in some of the pieces right here. And they asked him then, who are thou? Why did I baptize? And John said, um, I baptize with water, but there stands among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Beth Barbara by Jordan, where John was baptizing. And when it says the next day, John saw Joshua, you have to fill this in. So after, when you read this part after this, then you go over back to Matthew, the third chapter, to fill in what happened before you get to the next day. Because the next day, John saw Joshua coming unto him um, and said, behold, the name of Yahweh. He couldn't say, behold, the name of Yahweh if he hadn't been shown it yet. So you fill in. Matthew 3.13, right after John 1.28. And so after John 1.28, that's when he saw, um, that's when he baptized Yahshua and he saw the spirit to send him in the form of a dove. And Yahweh said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And then right after that, Yahshua went straightway into the wilderness to be tested of Satan for 40 days. And that's John see if Yahshua coming unto him and said, behold, Lamb of Yahweh which take away the sin of the world. That's what, that's when John actually um, showed who the Messiah was after he was tested of those 40 days, after he came out of the wilderness, then John said, behold, the Lamb of Yahweh will take away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me and I knew him not. John didn't even know who he was, even though they were cousins but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am I coming to baptize, um, therefore I'm coming to baptize with water. That's why I came to baptize with water. Because he that came to me in the wilderness and told me to do these things, this is what he told me to look for. And that's what John explained, what Yahweh told him to look for. And John, and John bear record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. But you don't read anywhere in John where he actually saw that. So that's why you have to go back to Matthew, the 13th chapter, to fill in the blanks of what happened um, in this one account. Then bear our record at, that I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a, form, like a dove and it abode upon him. And I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water... The same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Well, when did Yahweh tell John that? Go to Luke, the third chapter, second verse. Luke 3 and 2. Luke 3 and 2. Ananias and Cephas. Being the high priest, the word of Yahweh came unto John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. Now that's and he when, can, and when John, I'm sorry, now when John was in the wilderness, that's when the word of Yahweh came unto him and told him what to do and what to look for. It was there in the wilderness where Yahweh came to John and told him what to do and what to look for. And the next verse says, and he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remissions of sin. It doesn't tell you right up in this verse what Yahweh actually told him. So you have to go to John to pick up what Yahweh told him when he was in the wilderness. That's why he said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of Yahweh. Because Yahweh came to him, the word of Yahweh came to him in the wilderness and told him what it was he was supposed to do and what he was supposed to be looking for as far as the Messiah goes. So all of that, you got to tie all these um, books together to find out exactly what happened with that account. And he came into all the country about Jordan preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of Yahweh, make his path straight. So John and Yahshua have to actually fulfill all righteousness. What were they fulfilling then? So when you go all the way back to Exodus, now Yahweh made the promise to Abraham that he was going to give him a seed and multiply his seed as the sands of the sea and as the stars of heaven, but know for sure, Abram, that they will go into a land and be placed in bondage after a period of how many years? 
four years. Now, for 400 years, they were going to be placed in bondage or darkness, after which I, Yahweh, will come in and deliver them out. Now, Yahweh made good on that promise. He gave them to Abraham, Isaac. Isaac had Jacob and uh, Esau. Jacob's name was changed to Israel, which y'all call him Jacob. His name was changed to Israel. He had 12 sons. They became the 12 tribes of Israel. They had to go down into Egypt by way of famine. And then after a period of time, the Pharaoh that knew Joseph died off and they were held in bondage, like Yahweh said. And he said they would be down there for 400 years, that they were going to be placed in bondage. Now, the reason why Israel is painted so dark down here is to depict the ignorance that was in the world. That they were, they were bound down in this darkness for 400 years they were in darkness because Yahweh said that they would be. Now, keep in mind what we're talking about now. Now, when Yahweh came to, drop, to deliver them out, it was Yahweh that manifested in the body of a 30-year-old man called Oshia or Yahashua the son of Nun. And it was him that actually astral projected himself and gave Moses a vision at the burning bush. Moses is a Levite of the tribe of Levi. Matter of fact, a brother to Aaron, just like John the Baptist's mom and dad, they were of the tribe of Levi. So John the Baptist was a Levite. So Moses being a Levite, was given a vision at the burning bush that he was supposed to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt and bring them to Canaan land to bring them to Yahweh, their inheritance. That's what Moses was supposed to do. He had to make straight the way, the path or the way to, um, for Israel to come up into Canaan land. And so he came down into Egypt and met with Yahashua, which was Moses' 30 year old minister. Now it was time to go so for them to come up out of Egypt or come up out of that darkness, the self same day at the end of that 430th year, even though they were in bondage for 400 years, you had that darkness. So when they got ready to come up out of Egypt, that cloud appeared. And the cloud was to give them light by night. And it was a cloud by day. It was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. So they had to follow that cloud and the cloud was supposed to lead them to and through the Red Sea and lead them on over into Canaan land. That is the, that's like the first day, let there be light. So the first day they were supposed, first day they were supposed to come up out of Egypt, the cloud appeared. They still didn't know who the sun was though. They still didn't know who the prophet was that was supposed to take them on over. But the cloud appeared and that was Yahweh in that cloud leading the children of Israel and Moses. And so in the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians, it talks about they were baptized unto Moses, the Levite, in the cloud and in the sea. And the only ones that were baptized unto Moses, the Levite, in the cloud and in the sea, were the children of Israel and the 30-year-old man, Yahashua, the son of Nun. Those were the ones that were baptized unto the Levite, Moses, in the cloud and in the sea. And they got out here to the wilderness, and Moses was the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of Yahweh. He gave them the law. Moses had to do all the things that Yahweh told him to do. They were in the wilderness for 40, 40 years were they in the wilderness. And zero has no value, so you got those four, those four years or four days that they were in the wilderness before he had to actually go to Jordan River and point out who Yahshua was. So when they were down here in um, the wilderness, even after Exodus, the 24th chapter, when Yahshua and Moses went up into the top of the mount and Yahshua transfigured before Moses and Moses saw this vision, Moses still asked Yahweh, who is the angel Yahweh that you said that you would send before us to lead us over into Canaan land? Moses had no idea that Yahshua, the son of Nun, was the angel that was supposed to take them on over into Canaan land. He had no clue. It wasn't until the third trip that Moses went up into the top of the mount alone and by himself with nobody around the mount that Yahweh showed Moses the rest of it. That's when he showed Moses. It didn't take me six days, Moses, to create anything. I did this in the day. And Moses saw the whole creation from start to all the way down to the Messiah and past. Moses saw the whole thing. 
Moses saw from beginning to the end. John the Baptist, um, John, the Baptist John the Revelator saw from the end to the beginning. And so after the third trip that Moses took into the top of the mountain, and when he came down, his face shined so bright. Why is your face shining, Moses? I've received the light. I'm enlightened now. I know who the angel is now. I've been given the revelation of who the angel is that is supposed to lead the children of Israel on over. And I have to prepare these people to be able to be led by Yahshua. And so after that third trip, when they got ready to go over River Jordan, Moses could not take them over. Moses at Jordan River had to pass the torch to Yahshua, the son of Nun, at Jordan River and tell the people and, and show the people in the sight of what showed who Yahshua was in the sight of the people and said, be of good courage and good cheer. This is Yahshua who's going to take you on over. So at Jordan River, Yahweh, through Moses, had to reveal who Yahshua was, that he was the angel that was going to lead them on over. Even though Moses was with Yahshua all the way from Egypt all the way through, he had no idea that Yahshua, the son of Nun, was the angel that Yahweh was talking about taking the children over until after Yahweh showed him in the vision, the third trip, of who he was. And so at Jordan River, Moses had to give Yahshua, the son of Nun, a double portion at Jordan River. And so Moses, being a Levite, had to show who Yahshua, the son of Nun, was at Jordan River. And guess who Yahshua, the son, even though he had no physical parents whatsoever, he had no record of beginning or anything like that, no parents whatsoever. He was attached to the tribe of Ephraim, which was Joseph's son. And so in the fulfillment of it, Yahshua the Messiah, being the son of Yahweh, had to be attached to the tribe of Judah, whose father's name was Joseph. And it had to be Judah because this was a kingship tribe. And with the, the promise that Yahweh had given through Israel to his sons, uh, his sons, he said the scepter would not depart from Judah. I think it's in the last or next to the last chapter of Genesis when he began to tell them what was going to happen to them. And so it had to come from the tribe of Judah. And so when Yahshua the Messiah comes in, him and John had to fulfill this. And also um, with Elijah and Elisha at Jordan River, Elijah had to give a double portion to Elisha at Jordan River. And so when Yahshua was pointed out back there with Israel, after they went through the cloud and through the sea and was baptized unto Moses. And he, they had to go straight way into the wilderness and be protected for 40 years. And after the 40 years, it's when Yahweh, uh, or when Moses, had to reveal who Yahshua was to the children of Israel, that he was going to take them on over. And so in the fulfillment of it, John and Yahshua were cousins. John the Baptist had no clue that Yahshua was the Messiah. And so when Yahshua comes to John to be baptized, John was looking for him. He, asked, he was looking for him. So when he comes to John to be baptized with John, and John said, I don't need to be baptized with you if you come to me. And he said, permit it to be so now if someone to fulfill all righteousness. And the spirit descended on him in the form of a dove after he was baptized in the, in the, uh, the, uh, the river there, the water there. And the spirit descended on him in the form of a dove. And Yahweh said, this is my son in whom, in whom I'm well pleased. That's when John knew who the Messiah, knew that Yahshua was the Messiah. Because Yahweh pointed him out. And Yahshua had to go straight away into the wilderness to be tested for 40 days. Now, after he was tested for 40 days, then that's when John had to turn around and show Israel who he, behold, the Lamb of Yahweh, to take away the sin of the world. Just like after the 40 years that they were tested out in the wilderness, after they were baptized unto Moses in the common sea. That's when he had to show them who Yahshua was that was going to take them on over into Canaan land. And so when John showed who the Messiah was, and of course, um, his disciples, when Yahshua asked, he asked Peter and them, who do men say that I am? Some say Elijah, some say that prophet, some, he asked Peter, well, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you are the son of the living Elohim. He said, flesh and blood is not revealed unto you, but my father which is in heaven. And he, made, he told them, tell no man 
that I'm the Messiah until after I'm risen. Because had they known that he was the Messiah, they would not have crucified him. And so they couldn't know. It had to be hid from them. And so just like, even though this cloud was giving them light throughout the darkness, they still had no truth. They had no knowledge of the sun or had no knowledge that Yahshua was the one, even though he was walking amongst them. They had no knowledge of that at all after those 40 years had passed and the zero had no value. Just like uh, the whole time with the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, testifying, prophesying, and all those things like that, y'all was working with Israel, all those things back there, they still had no knowledge of who the Messiah was, even though they were looking for him. Even those prophets that prophesied, even they searched diligently. Of, they had no clue what was coming out of their mouth. They didn't know, understand it either. The light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. It was not until after his death, his burial, his resurrection, on the third day, according to the scriptures, and he ascended up into heaven and poured out his Holy Spirit. It wasn't until after then that a man could receive the Holy Spirit on a permanent basis. Even after John had testified of Yahshua the Messiah, at that point, Yahshua had to turn around and take his spirit back from John because when John was thrown in prison, he asked him, go ask the Messiah, is he, go ask Yahshua, is he the one or should we look for another? Why would you ask that, John? You just testified that that's who he was because it was not given on a permanent basis. Go get me. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm. What is it? I think it's 2 Corinthians, 4th chapter. Uh, Okay, it's time. It's time. It's time. Four, four, four chapter six, of Second Corinthians. Six. Um. One. Second Corinthians four and one. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Elohim. So wait, but so if I, by, by, by manifestation of the truth, and what is the truth? That's the Messiah. So by manifestation of the Messiah or the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience, in the sight of Yahweh, read. Third verse, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Mm-hmm. In whom the spirit of this age or world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest so the spirit the, of, I'm sorry, so the spirit of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Now, you have the vessels of honor, the vessels of dishonor that were set up from before the foundation of the world. All of those who Yahweh, all of Yahweh's children, all of those that are called by Yahweh's name, he formed every last one of us in our mother's womb. The wicked go astray from the womb. But the sons of Yahweh, though in time past we walked after children, like the children of this world, but Yahweh had mercy upon us to allow us to be called the sons of Yahweh by his son. And so in whom the spirit of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest what now? Lest the light of the glorious gospel of the Messiah, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. The light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. So now, we, since we have this ministry, we don't faint when things come up, but we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, not in somebody else, but in ourselves. When that spirit in you tries to tell you anything other than what Yahweh has already told you, you renounce those hidden things of dishonesty. Yahweh has already saved you. Yahweh has already made a way to get you up out of whatever situation you are in. We renounce those hidden things of dishonesty. 
We don't walk in craftiness. We don't handle the word of Yahweh deceitfully and use this liberty that Yahweh has given us as a cloak of maliciousness. We don't do those things, but we manifest the truth and commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Yahweh. But if our gospel be hid, if only hidden to those that are lost, colon, in whom the spirit of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. But the ones who Yahweh has ordained to believe, remember over there in Acts, to all those who were ordained, ordained to eternal life, those are the ones that believe. So all those that do believe once it's preached unto them, those are the children of Yahweh. Now those that believe not, that's the light of the glorious gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. Read. For we preach not ourselves, but the Messiah Yahshua, the Savior, and ourselves, your servants, for Yahshua's sake. Six verse. For, Yah mm -hmm. for Yahweh, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh in the face of Yahshua the Messiah. That is the true light that Yahshua gave to, look, Yahweh commanded the light to shine out of, let there be light, and there was light, and Yahweh saw the light, that it was good. That darkness fell upon all mankind because of the transgression of Adam, the Edenic transgression. And so the light had to be commanded to shine out of darkness. And those that were, are, that were ordained to eternal life, those are the ones that believe. That's what Yahshua talked about in his prayer in the 17th chapter of John. All those that you have given me, Yahweh, I have not lost one of them. I am going, I'm giving eternal life to as many as you have given me to give eternal life to. And this is what eternal life is, Yahweh, that they may know that Yahweh, you are the only true El. And that you are Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. So Yahweh commanded that light to shine out of darkness and has shined in our hearts and in our minds to give the light or the understanding, to give the understanding of the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh. That's what this whole thing was about, for Yahweh to glorify himself. Because once you realize everything that Yahweh has done, this whole purpose, how he did all of it, how he's the one that came down. He's the one that did all of these things. You can't help but give him the glory in the face of Yahshua the Messiah. But we have this treasure. Where we have these tre this treasure at? Seventh verse. For, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of Yahweh and not of us. So that the ex so we have this treasure in earthen vessels in these physical bodies. You are Yahweh manifested in a physical body. That the excellency of the power may be of Yahweh and not of us. Even though we're troubled on every side, we're not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed stop falling out when things happen this is for a purpose goodness now i got a few more and i'm gonna be done um let's see um psalms 139 and 12 um and then Uh, it would be good to read Isaiah 60 chapter, um, the whole 60th chapter. Isaiah, we don't have time this morning, though, but read that, read that, too. That was a good one, too. Uh, Micah 7 and 7 through 8, and then Revelation 21, 23, and Revelation 22 and 5, and I'm done. The Psalms first, 139 and 12. 
Psalms 139 and 12. Yea, the darkness mm -hmm. hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Now to Yahweh, there is no difference because it's all his spirit. This is Yahweh's purpose. He operates both mysteries. The darkness hideth not from thee, Yahweh, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both a light to you, Yahweh. That's why we have to get back to that point. Get um like a seven and seven. There was something else I wanted. I can't. It ain't gonna come to me right now. I'm gonna say Michael seven and se seven and seven through eight. Therefore, I will look unto unto Yahweh. I will wait for the Elohim of my salvation. My Elohim will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, Yahweh shall be a light unto me. Yahweh shall be a light unto me. Even when I'm sitting in darkness, Yahweh mm -hmm. shall be a light unto me. But when you are in the darkness, not if, but when you are there, because it has to be that way, because this is his purpose. When you are there, look for your Elohim. Look for the understanding of why you are there. That's what the light is talking about. So when we say look for the light, that means look for the understanding of why you're going through what you're going through and expect Yahweh to answer you. You don't have to keep right. on asking any and everybody else for what's going on with you because Yahweh That's has already right. showed it to you, but you keep on closing your eyes to it taking you so much longer to get from up under it. When you finally admit that your deeds have been evil and Yahweh right. is trying to clean you up, then get up and okay. recognize who you are and clean yourself up. And what is it that you're cleaning? How are you cleaning yourself up? With the knowledge and with the wisdom and the understanding of Yahweh and his purpose. That's the only thing that can clean you up. Work can't do it. Hearing this gospel being preached, and that's the only thing that you're getting, cannot do it. You have to have this within you, in yourself. You have to know it for yourself. And hearing it is not enough. Because if you don't have anything in you to recognize what it is that you're hearing, it may just sound good to you, but it can be removed from you because you have nothing in you to keep it. Learn of Yahweh for yourself. Revelation 21, 23. Revelation 21, 5, Revelation 21, 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of Yahweh did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the city had no need of the sun, at the end of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of Yahweh did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Yahweh, give me the glory that I had with you before the world was, and I give the same glory to us, his children. But Yahweh said, I'm Yahweh, and my glory will I not give to another. Well, how is he going to give us the same glory that he gave the Messiah if that's not who you are? That is the true light. The light is every man that come into the world. But the light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. That's why it took the Lamb of Yahweh to die for the sins of the world, to be buried and resurrect the third day according to the scripture so that no man, is, no man has an excuse because Yahweh appointed a day in the which he would judge the entire world in righteousness. By that man that he ordained, seeing that he had given proof to all men everywhere in the which that he had raised Yahshua the Messiah from the dead. And no man has no excuse not to believe on the son of Yahweh because he has given all the evidence and the proof and everything that is needed. We have greater witness than that of John. 
Yeah, John bore witness of that light, and he said, this is the Lamb of Yahweh because Yahweh showed it unto him. We have greater witness than that of John. The blood, the water, the spirit testify of the Son of Yahweh, and it's all throughout the scripture. And so, yes, we have to continue to preach blood, water, spirit. Yes, we have to continue to show who the Messiah is by the law and the prophets, how he fulfilled these things, and that's what we did this morning. Revelation 22 and 5, we, we done. Revelation 22 and 5, and there shall be no night there. And they Paul, need no. Now, I'm, pause, pause, I'm sorry. Now he showed Moses. He called the light day and the darkness he called night. So there shall be no night there or there is no more darkness there. There's no ignorance. There's no darkness there. There's no right. death. There's no destruction. And there shall be no night there. Read. And they need no candle. Neither light no of the neither. sun. Mm -hmm. Neither light of the sun. Why? Because he declared the end from the beginning. So in the beginning, when he said, let there be light, and he had no need of the light of the sun, it's going to be the same way in the end. There should be no need of the light of the sun. Why is that real? For Yahweh Elohim giveth them light, and they mm -hmm. shall reign forever and ever. And he said, I'll come to say it this morning to shed light um, on the situation, pun intended. Um, it, it, it's, ooh, wee, it's so much, so much in it. And there's so many things that Yahweh has done. There's so many different ways we could have gone with it. I pray that Yahweh did enough this morning to bring some type of understanding to it of what that light was talking about and why. It was possible for the light to be on the first day and the sun put in the, on the fourth day and how it was possible and how the vegetation grew. All, this is all these things happened by the word of Yahweh. Yahweh is all in all. And that's all. These things were brought down for a purpose. And everything created, what you see, don't see, been created, have been created, will be created, has all been done for Yahweh's glory. And Yahweh is reconciling all things back to himself by this gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. That is the gospel of reconciliation. And the true reconciliation has to be done in the man's conscience. And once that is done, then shall the end of the world come for you. And you can walk around in heaven while you stand here on earth. Just like Moses' face shone after he came down from the third trip out of the mount. Let this light shine in your heart. And anybody that has a light, why would you put it under a bushel and hide that light? We have been given the gospel of reconciliation. I truly, truly pray that Yahweh brings all of us to the same understanding, that all of us understand what time that we're in right now. And Yahweh gives us all a desire to leave the things of this world, to abandon our desires, of this world and seek after our Elohim and after him only. With that, I say hallelujah. 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 Praise Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Now that I can't breathe, I'm going to ask whether any questions or comments. Cool. Any questions or comments from anybody on Zoom? This morning, I'm going to check you through in just a second. Questions or comments? Hello? Yes. Hi. Oh, that was exquisite. Just beautiful. And, re and, and Yashua was sending me revelations throughout your lecture. Could you please send your notes to my um, text, text over to me, please, if possible, when you get a chance? And also, I would like to say, and I could, uh, it wasn't as loud as as before today for some reason. I might have missed it. I wanted to say how when you talked about John and Moses, John, Moses was cut off, couldn't go over to the promised land. And John, mm -hmm. John's head was cut off and was That's right. delivered onto the plate of the uh, daughter. 
of the uh you talking about John and Moses. Yes. Yeah. So his head was cut off because when, like you said, when when uh Yasha went to, to visit John in prison and he didn't know who he was, and he had to decrease and Yasha had to increase. So mm-hmm. that was absolutely beautiful. I always enjoy the lecture uh in your class. And um thank you for giving Yahshua the glory. And and uh Carl, you all and I was thinking how you go you you gonna give the truth whether somebody like you or not. Thank you for that. You said one of your <laughs> lectures you, you 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 might you're not gonna like what I'm gonna say. But I'm gonna have to say it. And you went on with your lecture. But I thank you for um, just being what Yahshua wants you to be and not care. Not care in the way I don't care, but you're going to deliver whether somebody like you or not, or you're going to be in a circle or not. Thank you for that, because I'm, I'm not in nobody's circle. I stand mm-hmm. in the name of Yahshua no matter what. And thank mm-hmm. you for that. Hallelujah. His name. Hallelujah. That's beautiful. That's right. John John's head was cut off. It had to be cut off, right? His his head had to that's perfect. That's beautiful. All praise and honor go to Yahweh to his son Yahshua Messiah. That's beautiful. Very good. Right. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, I do. I have one concerning <clears throat> Moses being a Levite. Okay, and also John the Baptist being a Levite. I didn't know that. I've been in class a long time, and I've never heard that before. And it just, another witness that ties together that this book is real, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, that's perfect. I mean, because here we have two people that are thousands of years apart, and they both saw the same thing on on the Mount of Transfiguration. I mean, that's that just blew my mind when I first heard it. You know. Mhm. 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 Very good. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? I cannot, um, let me look on YouTube this way because I can't pull it up on my phone. Let me see if there's any questions or comments on YouTube because I can't pull it up. Carl, I have a comment while you're looking for that. Okay. I just want, want to express that uh, how thankful I am um, that Yahweh made me obedient to study as he instructed us so that when he uh, presents all these things to us to reveal his purpose to us or the operation of his purpose to us that all these things can come together and we can understand them because we were obedient and have read the story or his story. Uh, You have to have that in you. And it's just so magnified now how important it was all these years he told us to study for ourselves. And uh, when the Holy Spirit is revealing through preaching or however form, all these things come together. His story just comes together. And that's and it's talking about his kingdom. That's how we are to enter into the kingdom by the knowledge that he has given unto us, which is his Messiah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's true. And that's and that's the reason why y'all would say we have to do that because we can't, you know, if we took time to go through and read every little thing to try to pull a point through two hours, we would never get done. And so that's why the home, and to those that are obedient, when Yahweh does preach it this way and use the scriptures and they're going back and forth, back and forth, and he can enlighten you on the things that you already have read, what you already have in you, he brings more and more revelations to you because you were obedient because you have something in you. But 
to those who have not been obedient and have not gone back and read it for themselves, they're probably still confused and really, you know, don't really know what the who is about or how, you know, how beautiful class really has been, you know, because they don't have anything right. in them. You can listen, to, you can go and listen to lectures all day long. You can read the transcript. You can read the Elohim book. You can do all that all day long, but it's still is not enough because you have to have a profound knowledge and understanding, not just read it, but you have to actually have a knowledge of it and understand the law and the prophets in order for any of those things to be effective for you. And Yahweh right. has given you the order to read it in too. Like he even explained the order to read it in. You don't start at Genesis, the first chapter. You start with Exodus, the third chapter, and you go to the 24th chapter. And when there's a cloud covered at six days, colon, you pause there. You go to Genesis, the first chapter, and read that whole chapter. And then you go back to Exodus, and you finish reading 25 all the way to 32. Moses go back into the Mount of the third trip. You go back to Genesis and read Genesis, the second chapter, with this Exodus, the second chapter, and then you keep moving forward. Yahweh gave us the order to do it in. And the reason why we need to do it in order so we can kind of understand what these things are talking about. Because had we not known to go to Exodus, the third chapter, and then stop at the 24th chapter, and then take up the first chapter of Genesis, you know, we'd be asking the same questions. Well, how does, what's the end of the morning, first day? What does that mean? The sign is we have all these foolish mm-hmm. questions and not have an answer to them. Because we started at Genesis, the first chapter, and thought that we were supposed to start there and keep on reading because that's the first chapter, first verse of the book. Yahweh even gave us the order in order to, to read it in. And then we will be confused, not knowing, well, it took Yahweh six days to create it. That's why we supposed to keep in the Sabbath because it took him six. We wouldn't even know what the second chapter of Genesis was talking about in the day he created and when he even showed Moses in the day. We would have no clue about any of those things if Yahweh had not come and given us even the order in which we are supposed to read the law and the prophets to get a full knowledge and understanding of what it is that he laid down back there. But as those things are testifying of his son, that's the only way that you'll truly know and understand who the son is, because you can say it all day long that I know that Yahshua is the Messiah. I know mm-hmm. that Yahweh and Yahshua are the same one. You, just because you say it doesn't mean that you understand it. You have mm-hmm. to understand it. You have to know it for yourself. And when you know it, you understand it. And when you understand it, you can teach it. You can explain it. Now, if you cannot explain it, that means you don't understand it. And if you don't understand it, that means you don't know it. You believe it. But if believing was enough, Abraham would have never asked Yahweh, how will I know Yahweh? that these things must be. And eternal life is predicated on not just your belief, but on you knowing. Because once you believe, then you're sealed, and then you receive a knowledge and understanding. So you have to take it beyond believing. You have to know that Yahweh is the only true El and Yahshua the Messiah whom thou sent. And it's evident that we haven't really understood it because we still divide him and not knowing that that's what we do. We say with our mouth, that they're the same one, but we still divide him in our minds by the things that we say and think or understand or misinterpret. And so we have to have a profound knowledge and understanding of the scripture. Shirley, you are absolutely right. And Yahweh will reward us for our obedience. Even those of you who have read and understand it, go back and read it again. And in your obedience, Yahweh will reward you for it and will openly reward you for it. Seek Yahweh in secret in your own household and be obedient unto his voice and read and learn of him. Go back and read the law and the prophets in order this time and watch how Yahweh will reward you openly. I love it. It's it's beautiful to me. That's why in the basics of foundation class, we're doing a lot of reading, but a lot of it we're going to be doing on our own and discussing it in class. And I'm excited about if we don't have it this Monday, tomorrow, but we'll have it next Monday. And the assignment that we're going to be given, I'm excited about the assignment. So if you missed it last uh, Monday, then go back and watch it on YouTube and try to get caught up with us with the assignment. I think it's from Exodus 12 through 24 is what we're reading. But we're going to discuss it in class on um, next Monday and then have the assignment from there. So I'm excited about it. Um, Any other questions or comments?
send me the information for Monday's class? This is Sherelle. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I thought I... Let me just out I thought I... Can you send me a text? Um, and whoever has the 517 number, can you send me a text message so I know who... I know who you are, Sharia, but um, can y'all send me a text message and I'll send you the link, Sharia, and then I'll send um, the notes that were asked about. 601-462-6035. Give me a text message and I'll um, get that information out there. Right? Is that a phone number to call? Any other, the 601? The number to text. Yep, my, my six phone number to text, 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 text that number. What is it again? 601. 601. 462. 462. 462. 462. 4635. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, Dr. Boston, did you have any comments? Uh -oh, I thought you were unmuted, but I think you muted yourself back up. Oh, we can't hear you if you say anything. I think you're unmuted, but then you muted yourself back out. Yeah, I have a comment. Okay. I was talking to I was talking to a brother um, the other day, and I told him, I said, "Hey, you know, Mike. I said I've never, I've never had a very uh, good at attention span." You know, I get bored real easy. I said, but I've been, I've been, uh, I've been in class and for 35 years. <laughs> so I know it's not me that's holding me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's got to be something else higher than me that's got me in class for this long a time. So I'm totally grateful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Can you hear me Thank now? You. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening to everyone. I uh, enjoy a class today. And I just want to say that, well, I'm going to do it this way. I want to try to keep it before you at all times. Every time I have a chance to speak, I would like to keep it before you. Uh, and that is Yahweh is all that it is. There's nothing else but him. That's what we are, too. He had no other source of substance to use but that. And so when I start my lectures off, I like to start off with uh, Nehemiah 9 and 6 to show the creation coming into existence. And then we go from there. But uh, what was explained this morning was beautifully done, and I hope and know that uh, if he was paying attention, Yahweh will reveal. Uh, but study your scriptures. Keep Yahweh at, before you at all times. Try not to let it slip. So he is ever present. Has never gone anywhere. There's nowhere for him to go. So he's here. Always been here. And will always be here. It's just in our mind where we slip and you understand and lose uh the thought <coughs> you understand and get bogged down in the day to day life, kinda of lose sight of it. But that's the fight that we have to fight. You understand? That's like you told Israel to go in and fight, for I have given you the land. My question, well, Yahweh, well, why we got to fight if you gave it to us? Because you have those satanic demons occupying the land that I have given you. And so those are the things that we have to fight within ourselves. 
of the thoughts, the intent, the desires of this physical world so that we can obtain and receive our inheritance, which is a spiritual mind or a spiritual understanding of Yahweh himself. So that's about all I got to say. I, like I said, I enjoyed it, and I look forward to the next class. If there are no other questions or comments, we're going to go ahead and um, announce We have Sunday class every Sunday, 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. Central Time to 12 p.m. Um, Central Time every Sunday, same Zoom link. And we also have class on Wednesday nights now from 7 p.m. Central Time to 9 p.m. Central Time, the exact same Zoom link as our Sunday classes. Um, we also started the Basics and Foundation class every other Monday from 7 p.m. Central to 9 p.m. Central, and there's a difference link for that. Um, so if you want it, you could always um, send us an email or you can send us a text and I can send you the Zoom link and put you on the, the reminder list. Um, so it won't be tomorrow, but it'll be next Monday. The assignment for next Monday is to read Exodus 12 through, 13, 20, 12 through 24 chapters and we'll discuss it and have an assignment or um, a homework assignment given um, at the end of class on Monday. Not tomorrow, but next Monday. Um, you can email us at Meridian soul, S-O-H-L, at gmail.com, or most people still have the IDMR um, Meridian MS at gmail.com email address. Either one of those email addresses will reach us, or you can go to our website at soulfood.org and send us a message from the website. If there's nothing else, we'll conclude with doxology. Take us from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, alone glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever, that everyone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.